Hello guys, in today's lecture we will do problem 10.3 that is related to uh, helical compression spring. Uh, uh, previously we have done uh, theory part which was related to uh, helical compression spring. So let's start with the problem. Here we are given that the wire diameter of the spring is 2.5 millimeter. The spring outside diameter is 31 millimeter. Let's say this is that spring uh, from the top view. This one is internal diameter and this is the external diameter so in the problem we are given the external diameter and from that we can find out the mean diameter and the internal diameter of the spring this is that mean diameter of the spring the spring is plan and ground means plan means that the helix angle is maintained throughout the spring sometime we change the helix angle at the ends but here in this case in the case of plan spring the helix angle at the end is equal to the helix angle throughout the body of the spring and what does this ground means? Let's say this is the wire of the spring at the ends. If you remove some of the material from the spring wire at the ends for the purpose of the setting, then that type of spring is called ground in spring. In the problem, it is given that we have total 14 number of coils. We are required to find out the spring rate, means we will have to find the value of the k. You know about the well known equation f is equal to kx or ky. This k here in this equation is what? It is spring rate means how much the spring will deflect under certain amount of load this is another formula that can be used to find out the value of the k if you don't know how this formula is derived then you can refer to my previous lectures you can sort this problem out of there then in part b we are required to find out the solid force which will close the spring means that all the coils will touch each other there will be no distance between the two consecutive coils wires Choice is equal to kb into l type d divided by pi d cube. We can use this formula for solid force by replacing the f by fs and tau by ssy where ssy will be torsion shear stress and fs will be solid force. Then in part c we are required to find out the length of the spring and we can use this formula which is derived from f is equal to kx formula. If we bring ls on other side of the equality so the difference between L0 and LS will be uh, X or Y. So F is equal to KX. Then in the next part, we are required to find out whether the spring will buckle or not. Uh, we didn't have covered the buckling topic in our previous lectures. So we will do it in our next lectures. But uh, here I'm going to tell you that buckling depend upon the uh, ratio of the diameter and the length of the spring. If spring is very long and have small diameter, then spring will buckle and if it is not uh, very long uh, having length less than critical length then it will not buckle let's say we have these two springs the length of both of the spring are the same and their diameters are different so the spring with the smaller diameter will have chances of buckling and there will be less chances of buckling in the spring of larger diameter the spring not to buckle should have length l naught less than 2.63 d by alpha uh, so let's start with the solution of the problem. Let's go to table 10.1 and the column of plan and ground spring Our total coil is equal to number of active coils plus one So if you want to find out an a or number of active coils then uh, Move one to other side of the equality. So an a will be equals to nt minus one and solid length ls is equal to D and T so n is equal to nt minus one nt is 14 So n is equal to 13 and ls is equal to D and T put the value of nt and also value of the D it will give you LS is equal to 35 millimeter now we will find out the ultimate tensile strength of the spring which is equal to uh, air divided by D to the power n this equation shows that how the diameter of the wire is proportional to the strength of the spring A and M values are taken from the table 10.4 so if you look at the top of the table there is a music wire and if the diameter of the wire is between 0 0.1 to 6 0.5 then a is equal to 22 11 and m is equal to 0 0.145 putting these values we will get uh, sut is equal to 19 36 megapascal now go to table 10.6 from this table we can specify the torsional yield strength of the spring torsional yield strength is equal to either this percentage or this percentage of the uh, ultimate tensile strength and uh, for our case it will be 45 percent means before set removal we didn't remove the residual stresses that occurs due to uh, wrapping the wire around a cylindrical shaft 
so SSY is equal to 0.45 into 1936 megapascal that will be equal to 871.2 megapascal now let's find out the mean diameter of the spring earlier we have talk talked about it that uh, from top view of the spring this was the outer diameter of the spring which was given to us now we are required to find out this mean diameter which is the average of internal and external diameter uh, so if you remove this r radius from one side and r from the other side you will get the mean diameter r plus r will give you d so external diameter minus d will be equals to mean diameter so d is equal to 28.5 millimeter and c is equal to capital d divided by small d so 28.5 divided by 2.5 is equal to 11.4 now bergister factor is equal to 4c plus 2 divided by 4c minus 3 so putting the value of c bergister factor will be equal to 1.117 you can also find out the Wall's factor as well. Now finding the solid force, you can see KB is used over here. You can find out KW as well and replace KB by KW over here. And at the start of the lecture, we have told you that how can we replace F by FS and Tau by SSY. So putting the values in this formula, it will give us 167.9 Newton. So this is the required force that will uh, bring the spring to closure. Now we want to find out uh, the value of the K. Uh, uh, for which we have two formulas one is f is equal to kx and another one is k is equal to d to the power 4 into g divided by add d cube in m uh, where we know all other values except the value of the g and the value of the g can be found out from table 10.5 but for that we need to convert the diameter of the wire into inches so d is equal to 2.5 divided by 25.4 that will give us a 0 0.098 inches so this is used to find out the value of the g from the table so here at the top of the table at the left corner music wire is given and for which there are different diameters if the diameter is less than 0.032 then we will use these values and if it is between 0.032 up to 0.063 then we will use these values and if it is up to 0.125 inches then we will use to convert giga into mega multiply mega with 10 raised to power 3 so 81 into 10 raised to power 3 megapascal so k is equal to d to the power 4 g divided by add d cube na this formula has been derived and discussed in our previous lectures so you can refer to those lecture if you want to learn it uh, now putting the values and after calculation you will get k is equal to 1.314 newton per millimeter now let's find out the length of the spring as we know f is equal to kx where x is the deflection so x is equal to f by k or deflection is equal to original or initial length minus final length so to find out uh, the initial length I will not move the final length to other side of the equality and when you put the values in this formula so L0 is equal to 162.8 millimeter uh, so uh, L0 is equal to L0 should be less than 2.63 d by alpha so what is this dd is the diameter of the spring and alpha is the in conditions how the spring is supported from both the ends either it is uh, supported from both the ends or from the one end and uh, so these are the in conditions we can use this table for it uh, in our case uh, we will assume that spring supported between flat parallel surfaces vaccine so we will uh, take d is 28.5 supporting these values we will get 149.9 millimeter this is the critical length means if the length of uh, this spring was 149.9 the buckling would have start at this point but if it was less than that uh, there will be no buckling but as we know that the spring length for our case is 162.8 millimeter so the spring will definitely buckle and uh, for which we can use two methods to avoid bunk buckling one is to put a cylindrical shaft in the spring uh, means we can support it from the inner side or we can put the spring in a cylindric hollow cylindrical shape uh, so that spring is supported from the outside